the Indianapolis Colts are the kings or at least the queens of the results-based decision-making. I was absolutely shocked when the news came out yesterday that Anthony Richardson is back, baby. If you don't know who that is, he was the quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, and then he got benched because the coach, whose name is Sean Steichen, he said, we've evaluated everything, and this guy gives us the best chance to win, talking about Joe Flacco. And this is not a temporary gig, baby. He is going to be our quarterback for the rest of the year. You can bet your bippy. Well, coach, your bippy has been bet and lost. All it took was an 0-2 record by Joe Flacco with two TDs and two TDs, four interceptions, and two fumbles. That's it. That's the amount of rope that Joe Flacco had. Because I don't know if you realize, but in two weeks, it's not only that John Morant can get over all of his issues, but also Anthony Richardson can. I didn't mean to throw a stray at John Morant, but it just is too easy. The NBA suspended him and he got cured. It's like a miracle. Like Joel Embiid's knees. Steichen said some weird stuff when he put Anthony Richardson back as the quarterback. Stuff that I assume was not properly workshopped, although it's hard to know because Jim Mercer and Chris Ballard are gone. Chris Ballard, who was willing to take the heat when things were going bad and they were benching Richardson, was like, dude, this is on me. Everything's on me. Well, now they're benching Flacco and putting Richardson back, and the guy is silent as a church mouse, hanging out his coach Shane Steichen to dry. The owner, Uwe, Uwe Toi, where are you? All you do is tweet Jim Mersey silent as a mouse's gaseous release. Nothing. The guy will tweet anything. Are you to believe that Chris Ballard and Jim Ursay were not involved in the decision to bench Flacco and reinstate Anthony Richardson as the starting quarterback? For your sake, you better hope not. Of course, the owner's involved. But he stayed quiet. Steichen said some funny things about the process they underwent and how Anthony Richardson has totally improved from the classroom to walkthroughs. Just everything's amazing. That was him talking about, wait for it, not Anthony Richardson, but Joe Flacco. (laughs) I just joked myself because it's so funny to me. Flacco gives the team the best chance to win. That was two weeks ago. We evaluated everything like yesterday's show. He's going to start the rest of the season. <laughs> it's so good. Nope. What do you think that Anthony Richardson thinks? We had an issue when we would, and this is something that owners like to do, but it's Jim Mercer's quiet, which is strange. But when you keep going back and forth, like doing a starting pitcher and then putting him in the bullpen or sending him down after a bad start or when a hitter is 0 for 10 and you move him up or down in the lineup, the opposite of what Aaron Boone did with Aaron Judge this postseason. How do you think the players react to it? It's one of the ways that I've evolved and changed over time because players don't react well to that and I didn't used to care. My my view was just, you know, SU and DYJ. Shut up and do your job. But as I look back on it, I could have done way better the way that we communicated certain decisions that were made because of the amount of players that we did not get the best from because they always felt the pressure of the moment without any opportunity for failure. So Anthony Richardson is going to take the ball this weekend. What happens if he doesn't win? What if he throws an interception or the Colts just don't perform offensively? Is he again looking over his shoulder? The back and forth that we've seen, and it's not just the Colts, it's a bunch of teams, the Panthers did it. They got in their mind an excuse when Dalton had the car accident, but they wanted Bryce Young back in there. You don't just throw away that sort of first round talent, that quarterback position, just because of lack of performance. That is an emotional response to some losing 
where you think, hey, we can be better with Dalton and Flacco, two journeymen at best. Yeah, I'll say it. Journeyman. I don't know what's going on inside the Colts. I can only base it on what they've done. I can only base it based on things that have been said. Kenny Moore is a really good defender for the Colts. And he had some, I'd say, some pretty strong things to say after they lost to the Bills. And he was impugning the work ethic of the Colts, much in the way the former Dolphins player, Elliot, said that the Dolphins are a bunch of softies. There's a lot of that with all the podcasts and all the platforms that the players have. As a team executive, you're like whack-a-mole trying to follow what everyone's saying, trying to figure out when you're going to need to talk to who about what they say, trying to keep a locker room not divided when there's natural divisions that happen between offense and defense, all sorts of things that the coach needs to do. And it's really hard, much harder now than it used to be. Of course, Kenny Moore did what all players do when they talk after games or they say something that doesn't get received well. What do you think is page one of the, ooh, that went over like a lead balloon playbook? Hey, I was, I'm sorry. I was emotional. We dismiss so much as being emotional. I find it to be a very poor excuse. It's right up there with, oh, I was on Ambien. Sorry. I just don't, uh, I don't view it as having a lot of credibility. But Kenny Moore apologized, and the Colts are going to live happily ever after. And the funny part is, as the, the scheduling gods would have it, the Colts play the Jets this weekend. Somebody's going to be happy, and someone's going to have their despondency continue. We'll find out. Congratulations, Anthony. You're back, baby.